pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. July 23rd, Rochester Common Council meeting. Um, first order of business is a minutes, and at the last minute, we kind of got made aware of a few um, areas that probably need to be adjusted, Gene. So, we're probably going to get with you on looking at last month's meetings, and we're going to delay uh, approving those minutes until next meeting uh, after we make some changes to that. So, and um, so that's that on those. I'll let, I think Amy and I talked, we found some discrepancies. I think Amy's going to meet with you at some point, Jane, and kind of yes. go over some of that. Do you need to wait on this? I would like to. Okay. <laughs> I see you're struggling a bit. That's just they asked for a code. Areas. 
they, they take several residencies, average them, and that would be your your ERU is called, and I can't even remember what that stands for, but it, it has to do with impervious area, basically. It's a unit of measurement. Um, so uh, they would give a rate for the residential. They would look at every small business, every large business, their impervious areas, and establish a, a, a unit for them. We we kind of arrive, or we kind of determine what our bottom number needs to be, and based on what Baker Tilly said, and the the, the the option three, which was actually the highest as far as revenue, was right around three hundred thousand dollars. So, when I talked to the engineering firm, they said, "Give us your target, then we'll establish what we want, and they'll establish the CRUs in a spreadsheet, and then we can actually go in and tweak that spreadsheet." So, in other words, we want to give nonprofits, um, you know, ten or twenty percent discount or something for churches or whatever, or um, you know, we can we can adjust that how we need to and hopefully put a lighter load on a residence. Uh, I don't like to burden the businesses too much either, but they do get to deduct that expense. So that might take two or three months to do, um, but he said it'll be well worth it and put less of a burden on your citizens. So which that's what I'm after is trying to lighten the load for them, but obviously we're pulling all those funds for our work on stormwater out of the street department, and we have for years, and we need to uh, we need to get this rate established. So I'll keep you updated as I know more on, on that. Great. Trent, I remember too, Brian had asked a question about the door last um, meeting as well, and I wanted to update him that I'm meeting, I will be meeting with the commissioners to talk about sidewalks. So that was a request that Brian had, so. Okay. You should have a couple letters in here. City of Rochester letterhead leaving the packet. From uh, Julia Surak, Village Management. There's a, a support letter and then another schedule. Now, you, have you got that one? They put a schedule on there. This is a process that we're going to go through if they get the award, which won't be announced in November. But if they get an award, and, and then we'll go down that road with them. Um, and Andy, remind me, I think that's a two step process, isn't it, for the pilot? Uh, I'm not as familiar with the pilot. I, I, am I think that's what he told me. Okay. But this is just a schedule to give you an idea. And I've talked to you about this on each of these. Uh, developments that are bidding for this award if they get the award we're responsible or committing ourselves to 10 percent of the investment um, that can be in cash that can be in infrastructure it can be in abatements it can be in this and the number you look at here would be the 662 on the schedule that's what we can apply toward our 10 percent so uh, this is something that as i explained in the last meeting whether it's this or whether it's abatement, this does work a little different than a normal abatement because you're abating the income stream, not the total investment. So it's a much lower number that you're giving up, but it is a number that we need to use toward our 10%. So I'm all in favor of, of this. Um, and like I said, if they get the award, they'll come back and we'll do this, uh, the proper procedure of getting this pilot established. So um, the next letter is, uh, Dated July 22nd is just the support letter. So I would like the council to approve this. They need this letter to send in with an application next Monday. Mm. So that's when the deadline is to, to get that application in for this award. So uh, if I can get a motion to approve so the, for Chamberlain House. So John move. Second. Bob seconded. Uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. That's the score. Approving the pilot. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with approving a pilot. It's just a schedule showing kind of what we're looking at, but it's nothing. We got to go through the whole process. Just like we have to do the, go through the tax abatement process. So, so we're not a, we're not approving the pilot. We're just he's just showing support of the project. He has to show a schedule to the state. Cool. So we have to. If this is down the road to finalize that. Same situation. You have another letterhead for 
um, color development. And if you remember, Don was here last meeting. Uh, here again, there's a, a support letter. Then there's a letter that Andy, I, uh, I know this has been going back and forth to you and Beth on this as far as the zoning. And I, I, I have found that we would have had to have a second 10 day notice and a second public hearing, even though the planning commission approved this, we have to do it all over again just to affirm their approval, which I made my opinion very noted to the state today on that. I thought that was ridiculous, but that's what it is. So they need a letter to send with their application. So if you read that, it says, please accept this letter as confirmation that the development site for the proposed Hawkins Homestead housing development at 1329 College Avenue, Rochester, Indiana 46975 will be zoned R2. This was passed by our area planning commission. However, due to a bit of oversight and poor communication, the procedure to hold an additional public hearing with 10 days notice for the council to affirm was not followed. We will have to go through this process for our August 27th council meeting. The zoning district allows multifamily housing as permitted use uh, by right without the need for variance or special exception. He needed something as concrete as we could give him to go with this application Monday. So I know Andy, I didn't run this by you. Do you have a copy of it? I do. Okay. I do. Uh, that's a strong language that I can say without saying it's absolute. <laughs> so, if uh, everybody's okay with that and the support letter, again, this is like senior living uh, apartment complex. You want to just kind of address it, Greg, a little bit about what this project is again? Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Greg Majeski and with Keller Development. We are proposing to develop 1329 College Avenue with a 35 unit senior apartment development. It will be affordable housing using the rental housing tax credit program. Um, the state kind of put us in a squeeze with releasing their allocation policy in March and saying, your applications for funding are due July. So four months is not a lot of time to put a proposal together. Um, we're still gonna be in a strong position to do that and, and we think get funded. But having zoning um, is a requirement. So with as much support or with as much, um, I don't wanna say the word guarantee, but with as much um, confidence as the city can give us, um, we'll, we'll just go to help support our application. Neat part about this project being senior living and the fact that with this trail extension it'll be right behind the facility. So that's gonna, you know, really aid those individuals that are living there. And so there's a lot of positive to his project. And so uh, I need a motion to approve both of these. Move to approve motion. the support yeah. letter. Okay. No, sorry. Bob moves, John second, all in favor raise your right hand. Passed four over. Andy, I have a question. Yes. Uh, um, so we talked about this yesterday, or Monday in the area plan, which was yesterday. Um, so anytime that the area plan approves uh, this, whatever, the rezoning, it yeah. has to come before city council, is that correct? I've never heard that before. See, I, I don't know if it's unique, I don't know if it's unique to this. I haven't either. We've done this dozens of times throughout the state, and this is the first time I've heard of this process. And I thought that in other words, odd as well. If I were drafting this letter, yeah, you've been in front of the planning commission, the planning commission approved your rezoning. They, right. They they approved a unanimous recommendation to city council. To well, no, I thought it was the commissioners. Doesn't it have to go to the commissioners? No, it's the city. So city the city council. council. Okay. The only, the only thing the planning commission recommends to commissioners that would affect the city are changes to to the so, okay. so Andy, would that be something that we could approve through the board of works on Friday? I just don't want this to go through unnecessary. I, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know why the ten day requirement. I mean, I've, never, I've never heard of a post rezone approval. Um, certainly, if, a plan, if, the, if the planning commission makes a, a recommendation to change uh, uh, the city's zoning ordinance, the city's building ordinance, or some ordinance the city passes, that's different. But that doesn't seem to be what's going on here. So I would need to talk to Beth, I guess, about why, why we're having this follow up meeting. I, I, I've never run across that. I talked to who? 
Oh, well, it was Heather that suggested it, yeah. remember, because she had said that there was some, if you remember from yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, that she had said there was something, some deadline she missed. And, or. Oh, Heather suggested it after this rezone? Uh, or yeah. After a different yeah, yesterday when she was speaking, there were lots of solar conversations, but she had stated that the reason that she, because I asked some of the similar questions there, because I just have never seen this before. I don't know everything, but I just thought it was odd. And so she had stated that the reason that they didn't bring it to this meeting at the last meeting, because we had area plan on Monday and then city council on Tuesday, was because of the 10 day. And so, but I've never heard that. Well, the whole thing didn't make sense to me when we had to do a whole other public hearing on the matter. Because we've already approved it at the area plan for Keller, right. area plan commission has right. been approved to have the rezone. Okay, well, but I just thought if, just if Heather ask. says we need it, she knows something I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I just didn't want the poor guy to go through well, unnecessary thing is, red thing tape. His argument is he's done this a dozen times you know, and never had to go through this path. Start. So I don't, I don't I have no idea. If we can find out something before Friday, I have a Board of Works Friday. If, if we can find out something where we can approve it on the Board of Works Friday, I'll give you a new letter. I, I, I doubt that's the distinction. Yeah. I mean, I, if, if Heather says it needs to come before, before the council, yeah. then it probably needs to come before the council. Okay. It's just maybe something we've not experienced before and something that's... And he hasn't either. Yeah. Um, may or may I make a sure. suggestion or recommendation? Would it be possible to take a vote conditional on, you know, should we find that the process has been met? Well, Becca, when I talked to you, you know, I told you I talked to Becca today, she mentioned that, um, and how, I forget the terminology she used, but I told her, I said, well, it doesn't sound like that's going to give me any more certainty than what we're doing with this letter and she agreed with that. She said, I think what you're doing is just as thorough as this other method would be. So I'm, uh, there's still that contingency out there. And she said, I think just do it the way you're going to do it. Uh, unless we find out something different between now and Friday and I'll let you know if, if we find out hey, this was wrong, we can just approve it by the board of works and I can, get you, I can draft you a, 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 a certain you know, a letter with certainty, <laughs> you know. So, I guess we got to keep going down this road, unfortunately. So, would this I was, negatively impact the grant, the, the grant application? Is that what the concern is? Is that possible? Yeah. Um, if they decide that it's not solid enough evidence, um, it's a threshold item. I mean, the application could be denied. So it's worth looking into just to make sure. If, if there's any other possibilities that haven't yet been explored. Um, I, would, I would very humbly ask that, that they be explored, and I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I'll do what I can. I mean, if we can get something to the Board of Works, then I'll have it to you on Friday. Um, but we'll find out for certain. Just to so, confirm where you're the breakdown Yeah, is. I'll let you know. Because it just doesn't make sense to me that we have to do it twice. So. so, Andy, I'm assuming it's like with the solar ordinance we're working on, we only make recommendations since the plan commission made a change to the zoning inside Rochester city limits. That that's that they like if they change the zoning the zoning portion in Akron, they would need to go to that governing body to get there. Yeah, I can I can only assume something like that. I, uh, I think the question the reason Wayne, was the I think that the question was that I believe that Heather has said that it had to be advertised for ten days. Yeah. And so that's what I think the concern was. I don't know if that means advertising in one of the local newspapers as like a regular public notice. So I think that was the question was that she had stated, because you were there yesterday too, that basically she said that, that we missed, she missed the window because it was one day after, I, thus it had to be brought yeah, yeah, here. I have no problem with it. I mean, with us approving it, I have no problem with another 10 day and have another public hearing over the same matter. That's why I have a problem. I have no problem with us giving you approval. <laughs> Yeah. We just haven't had the 10 days out there. So that's that's where the breakdown was, which I don't blame anybody for because it makes no sense to me that we have to do it twice. So that was my voice to the state today. But anyway, we'll find out. I'll let you know. But as far as we can, we, uh, as far as we can with you on that. So you. Yeah. <laughs> hope it works. Okay. All right, um, anything else on old business? I guess I'm already jumped into new business. So I guess we're done with uh, old business. Mm -hmm. I'm done with new business. Does anybody else have new business? Okay, as far as the ordinances and resolutions, we have three ordinances and I didn't get any hard copies of those. You had them, but we don't have, we have to, 
we could read do a couple of readings tonight with the four of us we couldn't vote on them uh, these are ordinances that we can actually do three readings and one meeting if we have at least five next time do them all because these aren't these aren't uh, polarizing matters they're just procedural stuff uh, so I talked to Andy I said we'll make sure you all have hard copies uh, for next time ahead of time so you can read to them um, and then we'll do all three readings and vote on them in the August meeting so we're basically going to jump over all that work. so we're ready for department reports unless somebody has anything else they want to add before we get to that okay chief uh, chief Du Bois you're up first uh, for the month of June, we had 30 medical calls, two structure fires, three alarms, five accidents, uh, nine canceled calls or false alarms, two inspections, and one search for a missing person on the river. Uh, we added one volunteer, two career firefighters, and retired Chief Butler. Uh, added four MSA helmets, 10 new 800 radios, and a boat cover. Training was water rescue, uh, held out, out of the lake and 800 operation, radio operations, which is the new radio system we're going to. Uh, special project, still waiting on the tanker. We go up for pre-con Monday at Spencer in Michigan and still working with the radio system, trying to get it up to snow. Uh, station report, Parkview has moved in as of July 1st. They are up and operational, fully operational. Uh, Lutheran has given up their office space to them. Uh, Lutheran is still operating out of there with a 12-hour MICU truck. And then we had task force tips on, on the site to do some demo work and work on a, we had a, a deck gun not working properly and a strainer not working properly. Um, future events we've been discussing. Before COVID, we had a safety day in the fall before uh, Fire Prevention Month kind of kicked that off. Uh, we've been discussing bringing that back. That date would be September 28th, I'll at the station. Uh, more to come as long as we don't have any issues with that. And then I talked to Dwayne. Um, August 5th, we'd like to do uh, our training out at the uh, city access site, and we'd be shutting down that access point for about an hour and a half so we can suck water out of the lake. We haven't done that type of training in case we have an issue with the uh, hydrant system. That would be our auxiliary source of water to, to pump out of that so we'll at least post something up there if there's no issues and if we did need to move it would just take a few minutes to break the truck down and move it but shouldn't be an issue that time of night it'd be 7 30 at night to 9 9 o'clock i don't think there's going to be a lot of boat traffic that time so can you do it on the beach side and suck up all the mm -hmm. awesome no we're going to use the ramp <laughs> we're, we're not sucking things through the pump <laughs> i like the way you think <laughs> That's a ten thousand dollar pillar in there. We've replaced once. We 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 ran it off duty again. Put back all the sand out there. You know you pull out the lid. Yeah. <laughs> Lose a date on that. You got a new excavator coming. Yeah, we got. It. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, August fifth. Mm -hmm. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Two shots. Uh, for the month of June, we had uh, twenty three accidents. We issued seventy one warnings. Um, it's like uh, forty eight offenses, forty case reports. 524 calls for service, 30 lockouts, 8 towed vehicles, 21 people incarcerated, and then you have the crimes that those people lied for. Other than that, uh, James Armstrong is our newest hire. He came to us from Peru Police Department. Uh, he's got two years of experience down there. We've hired him. He's uh, probably three weeks now he's been on. Um, so he's really benefiting from that. He's got the experience, he's got the academy. Um, it's going to be a nice transition for him and for us. Armstrong? So, James Armstrong. Yep. Um, yeah, and then, so that brings us to full staff, and then uh, Jonathan Easter uh, leaves for, for the academy next month. So he'll be out for four months at the academy. Uh, I think that's all I have, unless you have questions. Okay. I do have a question, Andy. Too late.
just have a couple things update on the Apache Drive project. Um, we did a walkthrough uh, last week and created a punch list of items that need to be fixed. Um, all of those have been taken care of, however, we've had to go back and there's two other items now that need corrected. Uh, we also need some signage added um, behind Kroger's and also um, at Apache Drive and Route Place Drive. Uh, starting Friday, there'll be a stop sign at Rao and Apache uh, for um, the Rao Drive traffic. They'll have to stop there at Beacon before they can proceed into Apache, and that sign will be up on Friday. Um, I anticipate probably within the week uh, we'll have the barricades down for good once uh, we get those other punch list items done and the signage is up. I know that's been kind of a the barriers been down, and they've been up, and they've been down. Um, it's just been a miscommunication with the uh, the people that are handling that. Um, we didn't want anybody driving on there until we had everything completely done. The uh, fence uh, work started today. Um, it'll take about a week to get the west side fence done, and then mm -hmm. he has another job to go to, and then he'll be back the following week to do the piece on the south side or the north side. So um, we're almost done. We can we, we can see light at the end of the tunnel for this thing. Uh, sidewalk project that uh, Randy had been overseeing. They just did a walkthrough today with NDOT. There's uh, still some items that need to be um, fixed that uh, haven't been done yet, and uh, some pieces that need to be redone. There's some curbing that still needs to be added. Um, so. Um, that's still in work and I think we're down to the end of the actually the, the time limit for that project and and uh, for too long the contractor is going to go into a um, what do you call that where they're going to have to start paying back penalty. penalty phase because they didn't get the job done in time um, 180 Fulton which is our storage area for the street department um, I talked about in the past that so we wanted to put a fence up around the security fence and the one thing we had to do was uh, buy a small piece of property between ours and the railroad to uh, to get some some distance uh, from the building and then we're still waiting to do the vacation for J Street which Andy do you know where we're at with that? So once we get the vacation ordinance passed, then we can get our fence up. And that's all I have, unless you have any questions. Okay. Um, get any more in the area plan for the adoption center, Amy? Uh, I was unable to go to the adoption center because I was on vacation. Uh, area plan, we are <coughs> having a robust conversation about solar. So. Any interest? Come to the meetings. Or not. And um, we're still working with the uh, Lilly Endowment monies. Um, as far as the blight reduction pro part of the program, um, I put putts in for four hundred thousand um, dollars, and the arts and cultural side of it, we're still working on developing uh, countywide arts program uh, for a later date. Um, last week we had a meeting with Banning Engineering over the industrial park. It was a mock site visit um, where we presented our side of the program and whatnot, um, gave them all the information that we have gathered so far, and um, we will have a final report back on the site uh, sometime in September around the 19th. So at that point, that's uh, pretty much where that is. Attended a meeting um, in Akron last week um, at Pike Lumber um, to discuss possible improvements and upgrades of State Route 14 that Pike is interested in, in doing. Um, I'm not sure where that's gonna go, but uh, at least the state was in and they listened. Um, 
as far as the housing is concerned, I think you have my report earlier here. Um, we're still working on with developers and, and getting sites paperwork done, so it's it's moving forward. Any questions for Mike? Bob, getting on the park? Uh, they met back on July 8th, and they also met on uh, June 26th since we last met. Uh, I, was, I was not able to attend, but uh, they do a good job with their minutes, so I'll share a little bit with that. We got a report from Lindsey Bart. Sounds like the summer parks program uh, was a success, and uh, they reviewed that. And, uh, excited about uh, doing that in some format next year. Uh, parks going to have their own separate uh, website that appears to be still in the process. I thought that was done, but uh, and then the things are going well. At the pro shop going to reduce the number of clothing items he has there. Cart path bathing is done, and Dwayne is still wrestling with the pool. Ongoing saga. I think they their steering committee for their plan. Did they did they get all ten members in? I believe so. Okay. I understand. So that uh, their long range plan is off and right. Not here, Bruce. Not here, Brian. Tree board or EMS? No report. Okay. John, getting on water? Yes, I did. We had a meeting. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything that was going on at the meeting, but it was uh, interesting. Commonwealth is doing the lead copper uh, water main improvements that you'll see around town if you want to. Wipe. They're digging on both sides of the road at one time. Yes, Commonwealth, and we're still checking on uh, lead and copper going into people's homes and businesses. Uh, Rust Bridge has been accepted the, the full-time position at the Water Department. Uh, they did a, uh, and, and it's a matter of public record, so I'm not going to bring up all the, everybody's wages, but they did give a uh, wage increase to employees, and the new hire uh, wage is now going to be $19 an hour. Uh, as for a new hire. So with that bump, they have to make sure they can kind of adjust it for everyone in their terms of service, uh, the increase in, in the, uh, the new hire hours. Uh, Marvin uh, approved everything at that meeting. I was thinking that there was one other thing that I wanted to tell you all at that meeting. Oh yes, they're still looking for uh, locations for two new wells. They're just not having luck. They've got locations and they are not working out. So we're still going around looking for two locations for two more wells for the city. And you have any questions that is matter for? Wells for increased capacity. Yes. And well, well number three is an old well. And we're just not too sure of the longevity that it will be. So yes, and we're going to need, and if we're planning on the city expanding, we're going to need more water, and it will just uh, it would be ahead. safety forever. Trying to stay, trying to stay ahead of the game a little bit, and we're trying. Good. Okay. County. Yeah. Great. Uh, as everybody knows, Park View's in place. Seems to be going pretty good. I don't know if you guys work with them as much as we do, but uh, so we want to thank them for coming in. I know me and you went to the open house of the new helicopter they brought in. They brought in a tw new helicopter. That's a $12 million investment in our community, so that, that's a good thing. That goes into effect. I believe he told us August 1st, the new helicopter, and they're going to have two of them for the first month. Isn't that right, what he told us, Grant? I think so, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Glad, glad they did that. We really enjoyed that. Um, Amy talked about uh, solar. We extended the solar moratorium to the end of the year to give us more of a chance to work out some details. I know we had a meeting last night. Dwayne's the chairman of Area Plan. He's done a tremendous job. He's come prepared. He's been leading a discussion on that. We had, what, two, two and a half hours of discussion on that last night. So we hope next month meeting to have that hammered out so we'll have a plan that uh, we can put in place by the first of the year. So we're working hard on that. 
Um, let's see what else uh, we did. We got posted a new nine for a new 911 director and a new EMA director. So if you know anybody, don't go to the auditor's office fill out applications. Um, I guess that's about it. Okay. Anything else tonight? Yeah, we've been running tight ships sometimes. We move it out here already. We did a six minute one. Only a four minute. That's good enough. Oh, we need to establish a things for our budget here. Can we do that without Beth? We have a calendar. Yeah. I got on the phone. I know it's kind of tough when half of us aren't here, so we don't have to have that the size of a public okay. meeting. Maybe we can just get together and establish a date. Well, if, if you are just establishing a date, you can do that via email. If you are if you are getting together uh, 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 to discuss the budget, yes, you have to. That has to be. Is that a public meeting? Budget hearings are public. Any time a majority of the council oh. is discussing. City business at the meeting. Okay. So yeah, that would include budget. So if we get if, if we get a schedule out by email, we need to have ten days notice for that, or two days, or whichever. I get lost in all the days. Um, for a regular meeting like that, I think it's two days. Okay. I don't think there's anything special about having a budget discussion that makes it ten. But we can discuss the subject in an email and determine. You can discuss scheduling. Yeah. Okay. That's so what I'll, I think I'll send an email out tomorrow, and we get a date established to. I'm guessing two weeks from, I don't know, I've looked, I've looked at the schedule, it won't be two weeks from night because we got meetings here. We'll see, I'll get something out there tomorrow and we'll get something nailed down. Okay. So if we don't have anything else, I need a motion to adjourn. Go move. Second. Okay.